Host Goulash. I'm here with Michael, one of the writers for Spooky Stories. How are you tonight, Michael? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? You know what? I'm actually doing great. In fact, I haven't felt this good in weeks, maybe even months. Hey, Goulash, you're stupid and dumb. You couldn't haunt the cemetery if your afterlife depended on it. You're just a big tub of goo, tubby McFart pants. <laughs> See ya. Hey, hey, it's okay. Who was that? It was Bullion, my Archcast Nemesis. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> it was Bullion, my Archcast Nemesis. Booyan seems like a real jerk. <laughs> yeah, he is a jerk. But you know what? He's right. I'm terrible at haunting this cemetery. And I am a big tub of goo. I've packed on so much goo since this pandemic started. My diet, which consists mainly of eating humans, as well as my eating habits have really taken a nosedive. And I just haven't been taking as good care of myself as I used to. I don't even have the motivation to scare people much anymore. I'm too lazy. <clears throat> so, when this bouillon puts you down like that, it makes you feel sad? Uh, yeah, it does. Well, that's a darn shame. Wait, why are you talking like that? I'm trying to talk like Mr. Rogers. Hello there, neighbor. Uh-huh. Now why don't you introduce this month's spooky story, and then you could have a few minutes to calm yourself down, and then we could have a nice chat and get to the bottom of your feelings. Uh, sure. Anything to get you to stop talking like that. This story's called Spread Too Thin. <laughs> it was only noon, but I couldn't wait any longer to take my first smoke break. My boss was already getting on my nerves. I leaned against the brick wall outside the restaurant I work at, fixed myself a cigarette, and watched the swarm of pedestrians pass on by. There were a lot of people out and about, most of them distracted and mindlessly going about their day, late for a meeting or whatever. In the sea of business suits, I spotted a man approaching in the crowd that stood out. He was wearing white overalls, was holding a bucket of paint, and was covered in splatters of blue paint. He looked pretty comical compared to the well-dressed business women and men. As he approached, I got a better look at his face. Something seemed a bit off and unsettling about him. We met eyes, but I immediately felt uncomfortable and had to look away. Well, it's about time. You're late. Again! Yelled the owner of the office that's next door to the restaurant I work. He was talking to the painter, but the painter didn't reply. The owner continued. I ought to hire someone else to paint the place. The painter silently followed the owner into the office. Well, I better get back to work. What a shit job. I really can't stand it. 90% of my 10-hour shift, I'm washing dishes with nothing to look at but a blank wall in front of me. The other 10%, I'm being yelled at by my boss for no reason. It was only a couple hours into my shift, and I could already feel my eyes glazing over. How are you taking so long? It sounds huh? like the owner is really giving it to the painter still. Like an idiot? Man, he's a real hothead. I'm not sure the painter deserves all that lip. What do you do? No, no. Huh. What was that? I put my ear up against the wall and tried to listen. Holy shit! Mark, what are you up to now? Are you going to do your job or what? I just heard a loud noise coming from next door. You didn't hear that? It scared the crap out of me. I hope no one's hurt. Listen, if you don't get back to work, you're not going to be the only one who's got the crap scared out of them. 
Wait, what? Just, just get back to work. Moron. What was that? I said I'm putting more on the dishes, the soap. Jeez, would you just let me get back to work? Uh, uh yeah, sorry. I went back to washing the dishes, but I couldn't stop thinking about the loud, suspicious noise I heard. That painter was so creepy looking too. I wonder if he did something to the owner. Maybe the painter finally snapped at the owner, swinging his paint bucket and connecting with the owner's head. I daydreamed about different scenarios that may have happened next door while mindlessly washing the never-ending horde of dishes. An unknown amount of time passed, likely a few hours, but it felt like a few days. Mark, we're backed up. Can you move just a little quicker? Thank you. The second my boss left the room, I threw down the dishes and decided it was time for another smoke break. I went outside and stood in my favorite spot against the brick wall and once again watched the sea of people pass on by. Then I saw out of the corner of my eye the door of the office open. I looked over and saw the painter exiting the office. He was drenched in paint, red paint. At least, I hope it was paint. Our eyes met and I nearly dropped my cigarette. He had a look of madness in his eyes. But not only that, he was smiling from ear to ear, a fixed plastic smile. He was carrying his paint bucket, red spilling over the sides and dripping onto the floor, leaving a red trail behind him. I could have sworn I saw some hairs coming out of the bucket, or maybe it was just brush hairs. He walked past me and continued down the street, blending into the crowd, no one seeming to notice him at all and eventually disappeared out of sight. I started to peer into the window of the office, but then... Mark? There you are. Get back to work. We're swamped over here. I flicked my cigarette onto the pavement and went back to work. It seemed like an eternity until I finished my shift. Once I left work, I went straight next door to see if I could find any clues, but it was nighttime and all the lights were off, so I couldn't see much of anything. I lit a cigarette and made my way to the bus stop. Time to go home, go to sleep, and wake up bright and early for another fun shift tomorrow. Ugh. The next morning, I forgot all about the painter incident from the day before. I approached the entrance to the restaurant when I heard... <coughs> Suddenly, I remembered what happened yesterday. I walked towards the office next door, and a woman, I think she was the receptionist there, burst out of the door, looking in a state of shock. He... he... he's... D d d d d b b blood It's okay. Wait right here. I went to the office window and looked in, but saw no one, just an empty room. I walked into the office. Hello? No reply. Man, what was that smell? I shooed away the flies buzzing in front of my face. The walls were glistening bright red. I guess the paint was still wet from yesterday. I walked towards the wall and noticed the awful smell getting stronger. It seemed like the flies were attracted to the wall. I looked closer at the wall and saw there were hairs mixed into the paint. Something's telling me this isn't paint. It has a different consistency than paint. Could it be? And then, I noticed there were little lumps stuck in the paint. Little lumps of some kind of... meat? I began to shake uncontrollably. Yet, I needed to keep looking to figure out what happened. I continued to examine the wall. And then, I saw something staring right back at me. It was a pair of sliced eyeballs stuck to the wall. Well, wasn't that a nice story? How do you feel now? All calm down now, you hear? Okay, this is seriously the worst Mr. Rogers impersonation I've ever heard. Yeah, I feel a little better. Good, good. Now, is it true that this Booyan character 
is your neighbor? Yeah, she haunts the cemetery next door. She just loves to show up here randomly and make fun of me. Meanwhile, I never go to his shitty cemetery. I just mind my own business and try to be a good ghoul. Well, that just doesn't seem right of him to do now, does it? What do you think you'll do next time he comes on by, saying all those mean things to you? I'll probably make fun of his butt chin. He has a really big butt chin. As Michael Rogers, I do not support this kind of behavior, especially not to a neighbor. Well, he started it. Yes, that may be true, but it doesn't mean you have to stoop down to his level. You're just as bad as him if you copy his negative behavior. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. I'm still going to make fun of his butt chin, though. Oh, well, I tried. Well, I think we learned a lot here today. I want to thank y'all for inviting me into your homes and listening to me and letting me be your neighbor. Hey, that's my job. Anyway, thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next month, my fellow ghouls. Bye now, neighbor.